Hello, hello again to another Aga Color Reacts, and today we'll be watching. This is my usual thing that I was saying for past months, so now I'm gonna have to tell you what it is exactly without actually telling you the reason first. So, we're gonna watch why 17 million telegrams are still sent every year, and it's because today is the 11th January, and on the 11th January 1838, first public demonstration of telegraph, mes telegraph messages sent using dots and dashes at a Speedwell Ironworks in Morris, Morristown, New Jersey, by Samuel Morris and Alfred Vail. So, let's just see. Who is still using telegrams? Like, I know that I cared like, about telegrams when I was a child still in Poland, but now? Like, seriously? Still? If I've learned anything from my YouTube comment section, it's that human beings love to communicate. <sighs> Nowadays, we have more ways to communicate than ever. Apart from the good old-fashioned vocal cords, emails are the most common form of communication, with 74 trillion sent every single year. That's 202 billion per day, 2 million per second, and all of them somehow end up in your mailbox. Okay. Next to email, you have WhatsApp, with 36 trillion WhatsApp messages per year. Wow. Then you've got 14 trillion WeChat messages, 7 trillion texts, 200 billion tweets, 109 billion Zoom calls, about 5 Yahoo Messenger calls, and somehow 17 million telegrams. Yes, you heard me right. The world still sends millions of telegrams every single year. The world, maybe that to some places. Questions. Like who, what, when, where, where yeah. why, and how. Four of those are pretty easy to answer. Telegrams, telegrams, the world, and now. But the remaining two, who and why, are a little more complicated. Okay. To explain why such an old and outdated <laughs> technology has managed to Aww. stick around while so many others, like pagers, dial up mm. modems, and the iPhone 12 have all but disappeared, you need to understand just how influential and widespread telegraph systems really were. You see, when telegrams became publicly available, they were a big deal. In the early 1800s, long distance communication was still slow and pretty unreliable. Apart from smoke signals, flag signals, and voice signals, also sometimes called yelling, your only option for sending a message more than a few miles away was by mailing a letter. And seeing as postal systems didn't have access to trucks, planes, or until the mid-19th century, even trains, those letters didn't travel quickly. If you wanted to slide into a fair maiden's DMs from another city, your message could take weeks to arrive. Enough time for her to get swept off her feet by another man, get married, and then get swept off her feet again by tuberculosis. If you were flirting abroad, it could take months, and you'd probably have to send a few copies of your message too, since letters were so frequently lost. This, famously, is what inspired Samuel Morse to implement a new long-distance communication system in the United States. After receiving a letter informing him that his wife was sick, he traveled home to Connecticut only to discover that she had already been buried. The electric telegraph, a niche technology used in the UK for railway signaling, seemed like the perfect solution. I guess that so was happening quite often to people by then, huh? made long-distance communication almost instantaneous, and you didn't have to worry about your saucy words ending up at the bottom of the Atlantic. So, in the 1840s, Moore set out to develop a national network and design a new telegraph language to decode the electrical impulses into words. That way, he could be there for his wife the next time she died. By the 1850s, telegrams were all the rage, with 12,000 miles or 19,000 kilometers of cable in the United States alone, and the very first undersea cable connecting North America and Europe across the Atlantic. This network changed basically everything. When? It when? to sync up clocks around the world and finally create- When did he said? States alone, these telegrams were all the rage, with 12,000 miles a new telegraph language to decode the electrical impulses into words. That way, he could be there for his wife the next time she died. By the 1850s, telegrams 1850s. were all the rage, with 12,000 miles or How do you put those cables on the cable bottom of the United States alone, Atlantic? The very first undersea cable connecting North America and Europe across the Atlantic. This How? This changed basically everything. It made it possible to sync up clocks around the world and finally create standardized time zones, it led to the creation of national stock markets, and it transformed news reporting from a mostly local affair to something national, or even international, giving people a new sense of global awareness that eventually made everyone really depressed. And unlike most outdated technologies, the telegraph had no competition for decades. It was the only way to communicate long distance. Governments, businesses, and financial institutions all had to redesign themselves around the telegraph, and, I promise I'll get to this in a second, that's basically why they still exist today. Now, in 2006, Western Union, the largest telegram company in the United States, announced it was shutting down its telegram service, which a lot of news outlets falsely reported was the end of the telegram. 
Then, in 2013, huh. India's state-run telegram service shut down, which the news outlets decided was a great opportunity to not do any research again and declare this the definitively for real end of the telegram. It turns out, though, that dozens of countries still have working huh. telegram systems, and there are dozens of companies that still get by and pay the bills on their very defensive websites by only delivering telegrams. In the United States, for example, Western Union's remaining network was handed over to a company called iTelegram, which still sends telegrams internationally for about 30 bucks. But why? Well, there are a few reasons you might want to send a telegram in 2021. In the United States, at least, telegrams have been around long enough that they've worked their way into the dusty old laws and protocols yeah. that haven't yet caught up to the 21st century, oh. or the 20th century for that matter. Some contracts, for example, still have clauses that require written notices, and telegrams can be much faster than traditional letters. That's because, by law, a telegram is effective the moment it's filed with a telegram company. The timestamp on a telegram is considered synonymous with a postmark from the post office. You might also want to send a telegram if you're worried your message will be challenged in court. Something like a contract cancellation or a message that says, I am so not going to kill my husband tonight. <laughs> Telegrams are legally recognized documents and tend to hold up in court better than emails or text messages, mostly because telegram companies keep records for seven years and can vouch for you as a third party, which Apple or Google or Facebook could probably do if they weren't too busy using those records to sell you a Peloton. The remainder of modern telegrams are generally sent for special occasions, like weddings or funerals, since they don't take much effort, but kind of seem like they do. So, after you're done proving that you didn't kill your husband in court, you can send yourself another telegram as consolation. Of course, sending yourself a telegram every time one of your husbands mysteriously dies will add up and cost a fortune, kind of like your monthly cell phone bill. That is, unless you've switched to our sponsor, Tin. Really Ding. quick, let me ask you a question. Is that How the end of the video? Your phone bill? Fifty dollars, sixty, seventy, more. Yeah, it is well, the end. Of, that was short. Damn, is that just made just for the? Anyway, so yeah, there's still plenty of countries that they're probably gonna use that because not every country is, let's say, technologically advanced. And um, that's interesting. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go and see. Um, Try to find a list of those countries. Telegram. Telegram. I, I don't know. So how do you s telegraph? Telegraph. Telegraph. F F H. Um. Oh yeah. So the first thing that comes up here. Oh by the way, here you guys. First thing that comes up here is the newspaper. Uh, what country is still using what? Still use. Yeah, uh, what about the use of telegrams by country? Well, Argentina, Bahrain, Belarus. Actually, I'm kind of curious about one country. Iceland, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Ireland, no. Ireland, Israel, yes. Let's see. Is there? No and no for Ukraine, no. United Kingdom, no. United States, yes. Uruguay, yes. What about Poland? Yes. Okay. Telegram Pell offers an online telegram service delivering telegrams the next day as or ordinary mail or as ordinary mail. Posta Posca closed its telegram service on the 1st of October 2018, so it's not that long ago. Okay, that's... yeah, that's kind of surprising. Hmm. That is... Um, okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, have you ever received... Have you ever heard about telegram and how... do you know how it works? Because I kind of know that's the that, that same thing. And the, the, the Morse code coming from that. And um, as a child, I remember we, you, we would get Telegram from time to mind. I was in my teenage years when we actually had a landline installed. So Telegram would be something that... Yeah, I think we were getting mostly like notifications about someone's death. Or about someone's wedding as well. I think I remember one time or twice we got something like that. Not too many, I just remember maybe like two or three times that we actually got a telegram because Pope's was still kind of okay. And um, yeah, but yeah, I didn't think that it's actually still in use, but obviously, yeah, you're gonna think about it that there are countries that they don't have 
the like internet network and the mobile network so built, they still be using the telegrams because that's already out there for, for more than a hundred years, I guess. Yeah, so that was interesting. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.